Well, it's my birthday, and normally on my birthday, we, Jean and I, go out with our kids to a restaurant in the evening. But because of the pandemic, right now all the restaurants are closed, so we thought we'd do something a little different, and we'd go for a hike and a lunch in the wilderness area. So uh, that's what we're doing today. This is Gina's first time into this part of the wilderness area anyway. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Now, it's mid-December, so it's a little cooler, but there's no leaves on the tree. But we happened to pick probably the best day of the week. Just fortunate, I guess, it fell on my birthday. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to go out and have a lunch, and we thought uh, we'd invite you to come along if you're interested. I think this is a good image. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Keep coming. Wow. Wow. Oh. So, Gene and I have found a place to sit in the middle of the woods, literally in the middle of the main path. Uh, it was taking us longer to get to the spot that I wanted to get to, that I go to quite often, that I have that nice little fire pit set up. But that's okay, this will work. It's turned out to be windier. You're not picking up too much wind on the, on the microphone. And uh, we're literally just gonna sit in the middle of the path. It looks like we found a couple of rocks to sit on and have lunch, so. Gina has offered, since it's my birthday, to prepare lunch for us. It's gonna be a happy yak meal. And uh, I'll let Gina explain sure. what it is that we're having. Sure. We're having shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. You know, perfect for this time of year, right? It absolutely is absolutely perfect. This is from Happy Yak Express Line. It's a gluten-free uh, product, and it contains lean ground beef as well as corn and potatoes. Uh, the ingredients seem very basic, and the instructions are also very basic, which is very good for me since we're out in the woods and I'm away from my kitchen. So yeah. Okay. So how, how do you prepare? Oh, maybe uh, maybe what we'll do is I'll just reposition the camera down to where we're going to be working here in, in the pathway. I have one of my little stoves, which I'll show you in a second. It's one of the ones I'm testing from Bushcraft Essentials. It's the titanium version of the LF stove. What a great little stove it is. Anyway, that's what we're going to be cooking on. But uh, I have to reposition the camera so that uh, you'll be able to see what we're doing. And Gina will give you the instructions for the meal. So this is our meal. It looks like a two-step preparation. I'm going to be doing the beef part first. Opening up the pouch. Opening up the pouch. Oh, there's ketchup inside. Two ketchups. Two ketchups, one for me, one for you. Now there is, I'm not sure if you can see that or not inside there. A beef and corn mixture, and the directions say to mix that with 200 mils of cold water. So I have my pot, Let's dump that in, add approximately, because that was my first mistake coming into the wilderness, I forgot my measuring cup, but that's approximately 200 mils of water, cold. 
starting to look a little bit more like beef. Is that corn? corn and corn, corn, beef corn. and corn in there together. So it asks me to mix it well. And now I need to put it on the fire, on the stove, to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to simmer it for two minutes over low heat. All right, so what I'm going to do to help Gina out is I'm going to put this over the fire that I have in the little bush pot. I'll keep an eye on it for a second. So in order to do a simmering, just make it a little easier with the simmering, I could, you know, with obviously with some time and some uh, care, we could do everything sitting on top of the fire. But I also brought out the bush box ultralight and, I, and my Trangia stove. So just as easy to set it up right next to it. And I'll put the simmer ring on to keep a nice low temperature on top of that. And then uh, we'll have the stove free to heat more water up that we're going to need for, for, for the what? Potatoes. For the potatoes, right. We need water for the potatoes as well. So this is all ready. Come to a boil. How long do we boil this? Uh, bring it to a boil and then simmer it for two minutes. So just to a boil and then simmer. So now I'm going to do the potatoes while that's doing its thing. Right, so you're going to need... I need another water. Yeah. Okay. 175 mils to 200 mils. Hence I brought the second pot, which is also our coffee mm -hmm. pot. Okay, this is getting to be... Yeah, I would say cover that and let it stand for 10 minutes. All right. That's what we'll do then. Can you put the envelope over here? I just want to lay this spoon on it so it doesn't get dirty. Cover this and set it aside. Oh, hello, Mr. Spider. <laughs> All right, now I need a little bit more wood in my fire. We need to bring some water to a boil. All right. All right, give me a second here. Okay, my second pot of the day. Also for making coffee with is the Stanley coffee French press pot, which is going to work well for boiling water in. And uh, how much water? Right. Between 175 mils and 200 mils, which is approximately what I have in this cup. All right, that won't take long to bring to a boil. And where's the lid? When that comes to a boil, we're going to add that to the potato mixture. All right, so, so, so it's going to take a couple minutes here. Maybe what we'll do is just cut away for a minute, and then we'll come back when it's time to add the potato mixture, water to the potato mixture. So our water has come to a boil. I've put the potato flakes back inside of the Happy Yak envelope. Oh. With Mark's help, we're going to add the water to the potato mixture. We just debated whether or not, it came in a little Ziploc bag, and we debated whether or not to rehydrate it in a bowl or back in the original package, but where it has to sit for a few minutes to rehydrate, not very long, it gets thick really fast, doesn't it? It does. Uh, these bags are designed, the Mylar bags are designed for reheating things in, so that's why we chose to do it, rather than doing one of the two bowls we have. All right, so it's just a couple minutes waiting, is it? That's it. All and right. then we're going to assemble the two parts. All right, so I just put the pot of gravy and hamburger mix back over the heat just for a second just to reheat a tiny bit. Stirring spoon and then I'll give it to Gina to serve out. Oh yeah that looks pretty good and it's hot. Looks incredible. Okay I'm going to lay it right there on that glove. Awesome. You want your beef on the bottom? Isn't that the way you're supposed to do it? Yeah. Show the, show the camera. Just hold it. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to dump right off. So Mark is the um, artist who carved our wooden spoons today. Looking good. It's looking great. It's, there's almost um, a gravy texture yeah, yeah. to this. 
you know, it, I, I thought it was going to be a bigger meal than it is, but it's not that big a meal. It would have been, one person could eat that, couldn't they? Probably. That, probably that whole thing, yeah. It was 220 calories per serving, which isn't much when you think about it. It's a good thing we brought some dessert snacks along. 220. Yeah, so 440 for the whole thing. That would not have been overly a big meal. So what we'll do is we'll set it up like you would a, a shepherd's pie at home and we'll reposition the camera and we'll come back and do a taste test. Happy birthday. Thank you. Are you in the camera? Wait. I think I am. Okay. <laughs> Let's try. This looks like an incredibly yummy meal and it certainly smells delicious. Yeah. Not quite like a, a shepherd's pie you might do at home only because it, was, mm. it wasn't baked in an oven or cooked that way. A little bit of work to combine the two uh, pieces. I'm not a ketchup fan, and Gina chose not to use the ketchup. But not know, at all necessary. You know, it's I, delicious. At home, I might put steak sauce or something like that on mine, but mm -mm. very tasty. It's a bit spicier than I, I would normally think, but delicious. But delicious, yeah. That's very tasty. I think I've said this, well I know I've said this many times. Let me ask Gina, how do you find the saltiness? A little bit salty for my taste. Yeah. I'm not used to eating a lot No, of we salt. don't add salt to anything at home, do we? But uh, a lot less saltier than any of the other mm -hmm. packaged meals. Yes. Mm. Um, I can definitely get an onion flavor. Mm -hmm. And the corn, the corn is a little lighter color than you might see corn if you're using fresh canned corn because of, I'm assuming because it was uh, freeze dried. But, and I was a little concerned it wasn't going to be fully rehydrated, but it is. Delicious. As, as is the hamburger. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think these folks need to see us eating. No. Gina feels I should turn off the camera rather than have you watch us eat, and that's probably a good idea. So we just finished our Happy Yak Shepherd's Pie. Turned out really nicely. You can't have a nice birthday lunch in the woods without coffee. So I'm using my Stanley Cook and Go, the French press one. And the uh, water has boiled. Take the lid off. And since it's a special occasion, actually it's my special occasion, every time I go to the wood I'm using the Rampage coffee. I uh, love this coffee. Roasted in Canada, can't be beat. So I've already pre-measured and pre-ground out the amount of coffee for this amount of water. Give it a little quick stir. Nice bloom on it. Put the lid on for a few minutes just to let it steep, three to four minutes at the most. It's cool out here, so I don't want to leave it too long. And then we'll use the, the uh, press part of it to prepare some coffee for us. It's been about four minutes. It's still nice and hot. Put the lid on the plunger. I've got the pot of water back on for doing dishes with. Ooh, I'm gonna move that away. There. And the nice thing I like about this is not only does the plunger act to press the grounds down to the bottom, but it then creates a double wall thermos, really. And great. So the coffee's ready. So Gina and I are gonna pour a cup of coffee and uh, we'll have you join us. All right, thank you very much. Cheers. How was it? I haven't had a chance to sip it's it yet. It's still hot, isn't it? Mm, good? Very good. Cheers. Cheers. Gina drinks hers with a little bit of milk and I drink mine black, so mine has to sit for a second to get to milk temperature. And while I'm doing that, as Gina pointed out, the Happy Yak meal we were just talking about, um, it's an express line, but like a lot of the Happy Yak meals, it actually has two methods of preparation. One is uh, where you can prepare the ingredients separately by doing a little boiling, a little simmering, and then setting it aside. And the other one is where you just do everything right in the package. And we had kind of missed that in the instructions. So the express method would have been the 
hamburger with the corn and the gravy mix, as well as the potato uh, mixes, could have been brought together into one big mix inside of the package. The correct amount of hot water added, stirred of course, set aside, and it would have rehydrated all together. Uh, it would have been more of a stew, I guess. Would that be right? Not, uh, not a really a stew. A goulash. More okay, like a goulash. Like a goulash. <laughs> all right, then a, then a shepherd's pie, you know, in, in layers. Would have tasted just as good, and that was good. It was delicious. It was delicious, yeah. Okay, that's all I have to say about the Happy Yak Meal. If you have any comments or any questions, uh, I have information, of course, in the video description below about where you can purchase this meal. Looks like somebody put some stones up way over there, doesn't yeah. it? It's a nice spot to stop here in, the, in this little bay. It's usually quite wind protected. What do you think Beautiful. of this? Yeah. Beautiful. Would have been pretty here a couple of weeks back without the leaves. It would have been. Was actually I was in here then. Yeah. So Gina and I would like to thank you for coming along with us on this hike into the woods on my birthday in December. It's uh, getting chilly, it's now late afternoon and it looks like there may be a storm rolling in so I think we got a good day out of it though. We had a beautiful day yeah. today. Yeah, so this is Gina's first hike into the wilderness. What were your thoughts? Um, it was beautiful, but I'm going to need Tylenol tonight. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it can have some very rough areas. There's not groomed paths by any means, and there's quite a bit of climbing over spaces. Anybody who knows the Susie Lake end of the Birch Cove, or the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness knows what I'm talking about. So we're on our way out, and uh, don't worry, I'm having, still having a good, uh, although I had a good lunch, we had a good lunch. We did. Uh, we're having steaks on the barbecue tonight. Maybe the last time this winter. Mm. Yeah, but... Uh, it's been a great day and I'm glad you could join us and uh, want to thank you for coming along and sharing my birthday with me. But until next time, get out and explore and take, take that path, path less, less traveled. traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>